John, I've got a quote to pick with you. I'm talking about a Friday night quote. Friday night. I'm talking the usual Friday. I'm starting off down there with G's Club. A few cheaper bevies down there. And uh, then heading up Peppers. And when I say that you definitely are the quietest, there's an understatement. But this particular night, you managed to get us back. Uh, you managed to stay in. And I felt that was totally out of the order. And I'm still, still waiting on an apology for you. <laughs> I'm talking, John. We were sitting up the back. Davy Herd, uh, myself, Kenny, yourself, talking. A chair was accidentally broken. There was no malice intended at all. Talking accidentally broken during the drinking session. Um, the, the owner just immediately turned around and gave the first person herself one. You, of course, were talking about someone else at this point in time. Right, I'm talking about football memory now. I'm going back to the, the darkest days of the 70s and the 80s. Scottish Cup weekly, through the Fernhill Black. Tom, we rushed to get home to work, get in the mic's car, through the M8, into Glasgow, just to find out who I can see. The game's a half. The game's a half. So you what? Tell me the game's a half. So what do we have to do? Head all the way back, teaming down the rain, back in the M8 again. Trouble was, way back, windows were up. Davy Noble had a bit of a problem with the balls. <laughs> so I don't know if you call it that, but the most, I'm telling you, the stench was immense. It was absolutely terrible. We were, we were struggling to breathe, I'm telling you. It was bad. It was bad. It, in fact, it made Mike and I a wee bit weird. Because when we got back into Edinburgh, we had a wee bit of a, a near fracas with a police car. He decided he wanted to get away from the police car. The police car decided he actually wanted to get ahead of Mike Burke. I never knew you would have car chases in Edinburgh, New Haven. Yes, we managed to have one. Luckily, as hell, we managed to get rid of the police car. How we did it, I do not know. I think my heat was in my arms. Anyway. I can't remind the <laughs> bank it's time we really, we had a jambo having a good story. We keep quiet to my right here. Is right, Jambo? Uh, I don't know what to tell. There was this one once, we were all in the cafe one night, after the minute the papers, me, uh, you, I don't know, I don't know if you were there, Bob, the night that Mr. Herr fell asleep. And anyway, he was what happened was, he just got up, he says, I went to the toilet, he goes to the toilet, uh, about 20 minutes after it, we're all hunting for Davy. There's no sign there. So we all goes up to the, to the toilet. And what? Hanging out the end of the ladies' toilet. Davy's from the yes, it was Davy. Asleep around the pan of the ladies' toilet. <laughs> well, we'll see. Okay, you, you flipped out of your bed. I do my flipping episode, yes. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Bob, why, Bob, why don't you tell us uh, how pleased our uh, travel agent and courier were with us in Tenerife? <laughs> well, how how the whole the whole neighbourhood knew and respected us. You're talking about you paid for accommodation, but I don't know why you bother paying for accommodation because how often were you actually in the Banya apartments at night? The only time you came into the apartments, you were talking to sleep on the bench. That, 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 that defeated me. I mean, the bed was beautifully made and it hadn't been touched for two weeks. And the courier had a cheek to say we were a rabble. Do you know that? How can we be a rabble when look at that bed? Do you know the funny thing about that? Kenny and I were in a bedroom together, and I got the uh, the bunk bed, and Kenny got this wee fold-up thing. <laughs> and for two 
For two weeks, he continued to sleep in that, and my good bed lay empty. <laughs> this is uh, Jamie, and Jamie's going to give us a story about one of the Friday nights that these guys went out. Come here, Sean. Um, just trying to think. Uh, one, uh, one that comes to mind, I think... Uh, you guys have just come back from Tenerife, actually. Um, I think it was only Bob that came out with us. Everybody else was too knackered after the journey. Um, we went to the, the TA club. Yeah. Donald yeah. Road. Somebody's engagement party. And they were selling nips for 40 pence a shot. I don't know how. Too good to miss. That was a bargain. I don't know how we got home that night. A bargain it was, opportunity. It was unbelievable. <laughs> we went through about what was it? About 15 quid each, just on vodka. But well, what the world is waiting for is we want to know at which point Mr. Bakey fell asleep. Well, well, no, there was a bit of a. a bit of a hue. <laughs> there was a bit of a hue. A hue there. Bob skewed up on somebody's, uh, somebody's jumper. <laughs> now you see, this is what, now we're getting to the nitty gritty, let's hear about it. And what about the time you went down to try and find the ball, you find it? Oh yeah, I was wandering about and ended up in this gym sort of area. I don't know how the hell we got there, but next morning I had the key to this place in my pocket. <laughs> it's really wild, we just about got... Uh, we just so I got lifted on the way home as well. Polish, uh, Polish, Polish stop. Must have taken us from McDonald Road to uh, Cannon Mills. Must have taken us about two hours. You're talking crawling. <laughs> crawling, crawling, crawling down the road. On your knees. Say, I'm dying. Bob was going to give up at this bus shelter. He just decided he was going to stop there, and that was it. Life was over. But for years, I'd been shit scared of this thing. I was terrified of it. And that night, Christ, I was jumping all over it. But I'm at all. Jumping all over it. We're still drunk, I reckon, at 12 o'clock the next day. Later than that. I've got a question for y'all. They know which one we're going to. Your first impressions yeah. when John told you that he was getting married. Well, I actually had to put myself <laughs> up before, to tell you the truth. I had to put myself up before. Oh, you must have Bob, that's not. John, you were speaking about. <laughs> Bob, that's not particularly unusual. <laughs> <laughs> You, well, actually it is, because it's somebody else that's normally picking you up off the floor. Yeah, Sean, what the floor's there, I've paid for it, so I expect it. Sean. I'll go back to, uh, Sally, I'm going to go back to 1982. We fucking start off with Kenny and me went to Spain. And that started off that me, Kenny, and, uh, uh, Somebody whose name we won't mention because it's not really worth mentioning he was going to go with us and backed out the last second and dumped Kenny for, for his deposit. So anyway, Kenny and me went off to Torremolinos. Or as they said then, Torremolinos. <laughs> and uh, when, when, Torremolinos. <laughs> when we got there, we found all kinds of characters that we knew. One of which was a, a, a wee lassie that lived down the road for me that was there with her boyfriend and ended up getting us uh, free tickets for the uh, Scotland-Russia game. One of the other characters we met there was a guy called Phil B. And Phil B, for years, has notoriously been a bum. And when we met up... <laughs> yeah, he, he went across to the World Cup with his uh, dole check and he was selling blood every other day. <laughs> so he could go for a bevy. So I, I'm not quite sure if he had a bevy, sold his blood, had a bevy, sold his blood, that type of deal. Anyway, it was phenomenal. That was just epitomised the type of person that was there. Anyway, one story that springs to mind when we were over there was uh, we stayed right on the beachfront in Torremolinos and downtown Torremolinos was actually 
actually on a level you had to climb these uh, stairs on a cliff face to get to the downtown area where all the pubs were. Anyway, that was no problem when you were growing out, but see when you were going home it was murder hole, it was sticking us sheer. Anyway, we, we went out this one night and we were walking up and down and these guys were handing out leaflets to me about all these different bars. This one guy grabbed us and said, come with me, come with me, I'll show you this good bar. So Kenny and me follows him and he takes us down these steps to this uh, this uh, door front. And we're going to one of these, one of these, one of these type of things, right? We we're going to walk inside. When, and it was just something wasn't quite right, something wrong with the picture. We suddenly realised it was actually a gay bar. <laughs> We got about three steps inside the door. That's for a game of sudgers. <laughs> so we came back out, ran up the stairs and got off our marks. Anyway, that was one of a long line of instances. One of the events. One of the events of that, that uh, 82. Of course, uh, just being there was, was uh, fantastic. Did you enjoy the nonchalant dink? Uh, the nonchalant dink came against Brazil and Brazil. That was, for me, an absolutely unforgettable experience. Uh, Kenny and I, Kenny, do you remember how long we stood in line for? Quite a long time. I'm going to say four hours. Four least. hours. And then eventually, I forget his name, Kenny will probably remember, uh -huh. but the guy, the guy uh, from uh, STV was with his camera cu uh, crew and he came along and started to interview us, not on camera, but asked how long we'd been standing for him. And he told us that his pal had a travel agency in town and he told us if we went down there, he had tickets. So Kenny jumped in a taxi, well I, I said I'm staying in line, I'm not moving. Uh, but Kenny jumped in a taxi, went down to the place and came back with tickets, so uh, that was uh, well worth doing. Is that the Brazil game? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. In Seville, it was just an uh, uncanny experience. But then uh, moving on for there, the next uh, biggie was Tenerife. And let me tell you the very start of the Tenerife. Sitting in Newcastle Airport, having the public tannoy system insist that the four guys that were holding up the plane go to Tenerife, go to the boarding gate immediately or they were being left behind. And I had no idea who these bums were, but eventually sure. escorted by police <laughs> to the boarding area. They were all telling them, hurry up, hurry up. And then when we got there, the plane never took off for about half an hour or something. Anyway, I, I think that might have been Bob and Davies first flight. Is that, that the first time you ever flew? I needed a few babies. So, you needed a few babies. You had them. Well, I can tell you this, by the time we got there, was, that, was it Spain that you threw your bundle or was it Tenerife? Ah, uh, it was Spain. Okay. Well, in Tenerife. Uh, we arrived at midnight? Yeah, about midnight or something. We were all reeking. Yeah. Got off the plane, grabbed our Sensible. stuff. Sensible people went to their beds at that time. One of them. Well, I mean, any sensible person would have gone to their beds. Well, being as it was, we never. What we did was, as soon as we hit Tenerife, we got to the apartments, literally threw our bags in the door, and I remember in the ad for the apartment, it says they were going to leave us a little like, basket of goodies or something like that. It turned out to be something like a couple of apples, a loaf of bread and a bottle of wine. Well, we threw the bottle of wine down our necks and went out for a drink. <laughs> uh, at which point, uh, I think, who's it stayed at home? It's pitch home? dark. We just arrived there. We have no idea, no idea of where we are where or, we are or nothing. anything. Nothing. I mean, getting back is going to be a major problem in the dark. But who's it stayed at home? David. Okay. David stayed at home. The rest of us were out. Ah, uh, somebody forgot the key. I had somebody forgot the key. Uh, I got a very long story short, the next time we saw each other I was slapping Kenny about the back with some wet trousers, 8 or 9 o'clock the next morning, because I'd fell in a swimming pool on my way home. Kenny had to, try. Kenny had uh, to carry me. At, at that point I took great exception to the fact that Bob looked so comfortable in bed, <laughs> decided that he should be up and about, and that's exactly what happened. His bedding was duly thrown out the bedroom window. <laughs> Bob was left writhing on the floor wondering what the hell was going on. <laughs> left to actually crawl down onto the swimming pool area, sticking 
Stick the mattress in your back, call him up again. <laughs> Nobody thought he was doing a, a, a moonlight runner. <laughs> Wasn't he going to pay for his apartment or something? And that's the time that Mr. Big Gate lost his watch from Springfield. That was another night. He says, well, who's scuddy that? Skinny Diddy. So we go to Skinny or Skinny Diddy. You can't have both Skinny Diddy. Well, it was Skinny and it went Skinny Diddy. Uh, at least he thought he did. Well, I was totally nude because I had my watch on. <laughs> oh, of course. We were in there about half a dozen of us. And I'm, just, and I'm sure that before he left, Bob's mum says to him, Robert, you're going Skinny Diddy and remember to take your watch off. Well, it never well, happened. The girl that I was with that night, I assured her, and I went mental, that this watch had cost me a hundred pounds. <laughs> Actually, it only cost me a fiver, but I didn't know. Well, let me tell you what the actual that. story was. He got it on a free fill-up at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> it's so special. Aye. Buy a gallon, get a watch free. Bob got eight gallons. <laughs> but, uh, the next day, we tried to put my watch together. Well, I was away to give up, but Kenny tried to stick my watch together. What for a minute? You had about 20,000 different parts saying, yes, I know where each part goes, I'll stick it together again. Kenny, why don't you tell them about the time that the, the rice was boiling over? <laughs> the boiling the bag rice. Is that bald over? What we did was we got this boiling the bag rice, and we put, we, well, we put it in a pot, and we thought all you need to do is to take this bag of rice and put it in the pot and put it on the stove and let it boil away. So this is what we were doing, but something went wrong and the bag burst, the rice spewed out. And the next thing that happened was it started spewing all, you know, have you ever seen that scene where you see soap suds pouring out of the, the washing machine? This was similar except it was rice pouring out of this pot on top of the stove. And needless to say, we didn't have rice that day. Yeah, it, says, it just said they put bag in pot and boil. It was in Spanish. Good at the start. Did so, you see a number like five minutes? What? Five minutes old. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, uh, we, we also, uh, uh, on that particular uh, holiday, uh, probably known to to a lot of the bar owners, but one in particular comes to mind, a colored gentleman by the name of Martin, who, uh, whose favorite uh, whose favorite phrase was, uh, what was it? Uh, it was Michael. Was it's it Michael? no my problem. It's, it's no my problem. Anytime something happened, it was never his problem. Uh, well, we always started at pub number one. Uh -huh. We always started there. At the very end of the holiday, they give us free champagne. champagne. Free champagne that ended That's up right. over my shirt, my only clean one. That's left. exactly right. We used to, we used to go to this pub number one and start off our nights there every night. And when we got there at the end, they knew us so well. They gave us a free bottle of champagne, which, uh, as Kenny said, was duly tipped over his shirt. <laughs> and for some inexplicable reason, I used to have this habit of throwing my shoe out the door <laughs> and, and retrieving it. Don't ask me why. It just happened. Quite a few times, actually. What about the time where uh, the barman didn't believe that you could uh, out tequila drink bands. Uh, tequila bands? You used to have... Well, what have you tell them? No, I mean, I just remember this... Uh, you remember? Bar. Tell them. Was that about tequila bands, what tequila the bangs. theory was and what happened. What the theory was, you'd get quite a large glass of tequila, uh, and then that you'd put a bottle of... Dry ginger. Uh -huh. What you would do, you'd pop the tequila, empty in this thing of ale, or whatever it was, hold the glass at the top, hit it hard, and of course it all come up. And the object of the thing was you'd pop this and you go whap. It'd be <laughs> fizzing up over the top of your glass. Mr. Ringo's here, so far. I think managed. Three or How many was it? Yeah. Three or something. Three and Apparently, course. one is 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 uh, extremely difficult to do. For a normal person. Two is uh, two, it's two is we get impossible falling <laughs> back. But three and, and three is you're inhuman to get out my bar. It's impossible. But no, he done it. I did three. And the guy was left absolutely aghast. Aghast. A gog. Yes, could not believe that this man was still. Actually, we watched. Do you remember we were we were in a bar and we actually watched a girl fall down when she tried it? 
Do you remember that? Yep. It was just a little place. We didn't usually go there. This girl took this to kill her bag and she <laughs> tried to drink it. She literally fell back. It was quite funny. This week got so we were watching. <laughs> and I wasn't drinking it. Correct. David used to have a good, uh, a good crack in laziness. I mean, you'd go out, you're talking Tenerife, you'd drink at five in the morning, six in the morning, no problem. So, I mean, if you're going out at ten o'clock at night, you may, want, you may be quite tired later on, and instead of going back to the apartment for a lie down and then come out again, David heard of it great. He'd go out to the beach where there was benches, and he'd go there and uh, lie down for about an hour. And then, you know, we'd go out and away in, and then all of a sudden he'd be appeal again. He says, where the hell have you been, David? So I was just away for a nap, like, just away. I'm back, ready and ready to go again. Not very. I mean, that guy was the ultimate laziness. He gave you the least amount of walking available to get his kit. And that was the way he would do it. You can't he not the guys. <laughs> He paid for it. He paid for it. And he expected it. He expected it. Thanks, Jamie.